So guys, as you can see, this is our file detection system. See that this LED turns on here. When the fire comes in front of this sensor, now the fire comes in front of this sensor, that LED over there turns on. Now the fire comes in front of this sensor, see the center LED turns on. See, so this sensor is working fine. This system we made here is working fine and giving the output as intended. Hello guys, welcome to Learning Microcontrollers. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can interface a PIC-16 F877A microcontroller with IR receiver LEDs to make a 360 degree fire detection system. So let's get started. So guys, this is our PIC-16 F877A microcontroller having 40 pins. It's a DIP version. And guys, this is the RX LED. Uh, RX infrared LED I'm going to use here. This is easily available in the market. You can uh, buy it from anywhere. It is very cheap. Now let's use this to make a fire detection system. So guys, as you know, each of these LED has two pin. One is longer, one is shorter. In my project, I will use three of these like this in, at 120 degree angle to cover the 360 degree parameter. If you want to cover more access, simply add more LEDs. That's all. Your procedure will remain the same. Now guys, the next thing is to label the LEDs. As you can see, I labeled the longer pin as a signal and shorter pin as a 5 volt for each LED. You can shuffle these two pins as well, it doesn't matter, but I always suggest you always take the longer pin as a signal and shorter pin as a 5 volt, like this. Now guys, the next thing is, let's connect it with a pick. You common all the 5 volt pin of the LEDs like this. I mean the shorter pins, you common them and you send it to the common VCC of the pick. In this way, these will get the 5 volt from the pick or the V reference voltage. Now for the longer pin, you will need a 10 kilo ohm resistor for each LED like this. This LED here is working as a sensor. So I may sometimes call it a sensor, but in reality, it is a infrared RX LED. So guys, we have a 10 kilo ohm resistor for each LED. Now guys, the next thing is to connect the signal pin with a pick. So for the top LED, I will connect the signal pin to the one end of its 10 kilo ohm resistor like this. Now from the same pin, you will take out your output. For the output, you can use any available ADC pin of your, of your PIC microcontroller. I am going to use a pin number A0 for the top LED like this. Now from the other end of this 10 kilo ohm resistor, you will send it to the common ground of the PIC like this. Now guys, for the left LED, connect the signal pin to the one end of the 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now from the same pin, take out your output. And for, again, you will use any other ADC pin other than the one used for the top LED like this. Now guys, Again, from the same 10 kilo ohm resistor for the second LED, from the other end of this 10 kilo ohm resistor, you will send it to the common ground like this. Now, let's do it for the right LED. Again, connect the signal pin to the one end of its 10 kilo ohm resistor like this. Then, from the same pin, take out your output. You can use any available ADC pin of the pick other than the two being used for the top and the left LED. So, I'm going to use the pin number A2. It's available like this. In this way, three pins of three ADC pins of Pick have been utilized for the three uh, RX receiver infrared LEDs, which are acting as fire detection sen sensors here. So guys, now from the other end of the third LED's 10 kilo ohm resistor, you will send it to the common ground like this. In this way, your three uh, RX LEDs, basically three RX fire detection sensors, have been connected to the pick. And they have been connected in this formation, so we can get uh, uh, detection of fire from all 360 degree. Because one sensor only covers its front side. It do not cover the back side. So now let's uh, get to the output. How we are going to display the output. For the output, I will use three LEDs like this. This one LED will be for the top resistor. Then the center one for the left resistor. Oh, sorry, set top LED. For the top LED, uh, top fire detection sensor. Then the center LED for the left fire detection sensor. Then the bottom LED for the right fire detection center sensor. Whenever the fire will be detected by this sensor, the right one, then this LED will turn on. When it will be directed by this sensor, then this LED will turn on. When it will be directed by this sensor, then this LED will turn on. In this way, we will get, get a know-how, how we can use a fire detection sensor to program the pick in such a way that we will turn on the LEDs. Then later on, you can modify the code. You can add alarm here. Instead of LED, you may use an alarm or you may use some sort of valve or some sort of water water nozzle, water pump that it should start sprinkling the water as soon as the fire is detected. Then you can modify and replace these LEDs with any type of uh, hardware you want to interface. So let's get started with the LEDs. 
So guys, let's connect the LEDs. As you know, each LED has two pin. One is longer and one is shorter. As you can see, remember that longer pin is always a power and shorter pin is always a ground for the LED. You cannot shuffle these two pins in case of this LED. Now guys, let's connect them. Now to connect these LEDs with a pick, you will need a 220 ohm resistor for each LED. Uh, this resistor is basically a safety resistor. Uh, it is basically to save the LED from getting burned from the voltage it is receiving from the pick. Usually these LEDs work on 3.3 or 3.2 volt while the pin of the pick gives 5 volt and then there is a current limitation problem. You cannot give 2 to 3 ampere, milli ampere more than that current to an LED, it gets burned. So this resistor acts as a current limiting resistor or you can say a safety resistor. So you can use any resistor from 100 to 500 ohm value. I suggest you always use the 220 ohm because it is good enough. Higher the value of the resistor, the dimmer the LED will get. So now let's connect it with a pick. Now for the top LED, you connect the power pin to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor. Then from this other end of the 220 ohm resistor, you can use any available GPIO digital input output pin of the pick. I'm going to use a pin number C4 for the top LED. Now for the right or the center LED, again do the same, connect the power pin to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor. Then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor, connect it to any available digital input output pin of the pick. I am going to use a pin number D3 for this, that is pin number 22 of the pick. Now guys again, for the third LED, that is the bottom most LED, connect the power pin to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor. Then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor, you can use any available digital input output pin of the pick. I am going to use a pin number D2, that is pin number 21 of the pick like this. In this way, our hardware is connected. So let me first introduce you to the hardware, then we get on to the programming. So guys, this is the hardware here as you can see. Here you can see that I have the three sensors, one, two, three, connected at angles of 120 degree. I tried to bring them to the 120 degree in a V formation, but they are somewhat a bit ahead. You can add more LEDs, you have more ADC pins available. Then these are the three LEDs, one, the center one, and the third one for each of these fire detection sensors. Then there is our PIC16 FA77A microcontroller having 40 pins, it's a DIP version. And then that's all, the rest of the circuit is just a trainer. I will also share the link of the video in which I told you how you can uh, set up this hardware here for doing the programming, etc. So let's get to our micro C4 PIC before we move on to the programming. This is our micro C4 PIC here, guys. Let me zoom in. As you can see that it's micro C4 PIC version 7.2.0. I'm going to use here, you can use the higher versions as well, latest version is always a better, click on file, new, new project, this window pops up, new project wizard, click on next, write the name of the project, fire, detection, system, tutorial, by learning, microcontroller, like this. Now guys, this is the path where your hex files and C files will be created, select the path. Now this is the microcontroller, select the microcontroller you are going to use. I am going to use a PIC16 FA77A like this. And now select the crystal, I am going to use a 20 MHz crystal, click on next, finish. Now guys, this window here pops up. Before you do anything else, first of all, save your work. After that, go to the right in the libraries, expand the micro libraries, expand the system folder. Here you will select the libraries you are going to use in this project, since our sensors give ADC output, so we will need the ADC library and there is a command called ADC INIT, you write down ADC INIT, this command will initialize all the ADC pins of the pick, so you don't have to separately initialize each pin, so all the pins have been initialized now. Give some initialization delay, I suggest you always give some delay in the one time loop, although it is not necessary in the newer versions, but it is a good practice to give some delay. Now guys, our ADC pins are initialized. Now we have three LEDs. Let's initialize those LEDs. So let's get to the schematic to see where the LEDs are. So uh, one LED at pin number D2, D3 and C4. Let's initialize them. D2, D3 and C4. So first of all, write down this D dot F2 equals to zero. So that's the LED at D2. Tris, this command is like in case of Arduino, you, you use the command pin mode output or input. Here, this is a Tris register. Tris, name of the pin you are going to use. D dot F2 means pin number D2. 0 means it's an output. 1 means it's an input. Now, give the initial state. Port D dot F2 equals to 0. That initially the LED must be off. So, in case of Arduino, you write like digital write high or low. So, 0 means it's low and 1 means it's high. 
now give some initialization delay here so this is one pin initialized now rest of the two pins are to be initialized just copy this code paste it here paste it here twice now the next pin is the pin number d3 just make it d3 now pin number d3 is also initialized and it is by default off now another pin is the c dot f2 the third led so make it c dot f2 pin number c dot f2 initialized and initially by default it is off now we have our adc pins initialized our led is initialized now we can move on to the forever loop write down while one forever loop starts here and ends here now guys here make it look some presentable add beauty to your project that's a good practice now first of all we will need to read the values from the sensor for that purpose we will need variables which will store the value we take some integers i and t write down fire one this is for the first sensor now for the circuit sensor make it fire two and for the set third sensor the variable is fire three like this now guys write down the command first variable fire one is equal to adc underscore read from which channel channel zero now the fire one our first sensor is connected to the pin number a zero of the pick like this so whenever the fire will be detected by this sensor then value whichever the value is coming will be stored in it so whenever a fire is detected the value of the ir receiver led always go high so it means the value must be above 600 or 500 adc value max resolution is uh, max resolution is 2 power 10 equals to 1024 so in case a fire is detected then value will always be above 500 you can also check it using an led but i have done this in the past as well so it's always above 500 so you can take 500 value as a standard that whenever a fire is detected value is above 500 now you write the condition if fire one is greater than 500 then it means fire is detected so led must turn on so this led corresponding to the first sensor at d2 will turn on like this now else if the fire is not detected led should remain off else led is off so bring it back to the initial state that is zero so we forgot to add this here semicolons like this now guys this is for the first sensor now we do the coding for the second sensor just copy this paste it here now make it fire 2 because second uh, variable is a fire 2 here see that for the second sensor and then make it also fire 2 and the value second sensor is not connected to the pin number a0 second sensor is connected to the pin number a1 so channel is 1 now so guys if the fire is directed by the second sensor then the led at d3 will turn on and if not it will turn off now again copy this for the third sensor like this now the fire 3 is the variable for the third sensor and third sensor is connected to the pin number a2 which means the channel 2 now if the fire is directed by the third sensor then the led at pin number c dot f4 will turn on else it will remain off so it's simple as that so this is our simple code here for detecting the fire and turning on and off leds so let's build it and see what errors we get so there are no errors it's built so let's uh, write it on the hardware and see what happens so i get, go to the picket 3 programmer tool here i click on file this is the hex file created here double click on it and click on write okay the new code is being written let's get to the hardware to check our coding works or not okay let it write the new code okay guys the new code is written and the circuit is powered up see by default these leds are off because no fire is detected now i bring the fire see the led turns on i turn off the fire led turns off see so it means it is working so this sensor is working now check this sensor okay see the led turns on as soon as the fire comes in front okay i bring it from that side see it is working fine now for this sensor see it is working fine now i rotate it 
see the fire is detected now this detected by this sensor now detected by this sensor so guys our code is working as intended if you have any questions you can ask in the comment section i hope you guys learned something from this video i will share this code and all the micro c4 pic files in the description of this video you will have a google drive link there you will open that link and you can download all those files including the hex file micro c files and rest of the files that come with the build so guys i hope to see you in the videos again see it is working like a charm it's a very good circuit and very powerful as well so guys uh, thank you for your patience and we'll see you in the next video